Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. I thank you for choosing to spend a little time with us during our Thursday night Bible study. And I pray that you will receive something that will prepare you for your journey in the future. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, teach us through your written and living word how to experience rest and peace while we are experiencing great storms in our lives. Not only do we fear that those storms can be deadly, but we can also be comforted with the fact that we know that you promised never to leave us. And therefore, with you being with us, we are safe no matter how it might seem to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our study verse for this study is found in the book of Mark, uh, the gospel as it was recorded by Mark, uh, chapter 4, verse 37 and 38. That's Mark, chapter 4, verse 37 and 38. Verse 37 says, And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep, on the cushion, and they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his holy word. Uh, the thought for this study is we can experience rest and peace in great storms. Again, that's we can experience rest and peace in great storms. If you joined us last week, you may recall that our focus was on the fact that Jesus had taught a day, uh, a tough day ministering to the people that had come to him. And when Jesus said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side of the body of water, Jesus did not take time to advise his family that he was going on a trip. He didn't get a change of clothing or even he, he didn't even pick up any toiletries, a toothbrush or, or toothpaste or anything like that. His disciples took him as he was. Now, maybe that could teach us that we as followers of Jesus Christ should be ready to go at a moment's notice. It's easy to surmise that if they had not chosen to go to the other side with Jesus, then they would not have encountered the powerful storm. And, and, and a lot of times I think we would prefer to avoid the storms of life. But if we're going to truly follow Jesus, we can anticipate that there will be some storms. If we try to always play it safe, we will miss out on opportunities of not knowing that Jesus is able to calm the storms in our lives. Now, enough said about last week's lesson. Now let's turn to uh, turn our attentions to the focus for this week. And again, it's we can experience rest and peace in great storms. Just as in the Old Testament, God was known as being a very present help in trouble. So is Jesus uh, in the lives of his disciples and in our lives. He's a very present help when we're in storms. For more years than I care to mention, I laid awake at night rehearsing in my mind how I'd handle different storms that might arise. You know how it is. If this happens, then I'll respond this way. But if that happens, I'll respond that way. <laughs> uh, now, all along, I was wasting time. I, w I wasted uh, a lot of time uh, and was never prepared for the storms of life. Now, now that I'm a little older, I've concluded that since God neither sleeps or slumbers, then what should uh, what I should learn to do is to spend less time worrying and more time sleeping, getting prepared for the tomorrow's work. Allow me to pose a question to you. How many of us have ever thought of following Jesus' example when we find ourselves in a fierce storm 
I'm not talking about a tornado or a hurricane uh, type of storm. I'm talking about uh, fierce storms that take uh, place in our lives when we lose a job, for instance. When, when, when something unexpectedly, we've been saving a little bit, and then something unexpectedly comes up, and then uh, that saving is gone just like that. I'm talking about when sickness strikes without any warning and we have to depend on someone else to be able to make it from day to day. I'm talking about when death invades our midst and all of a sudden someone very dear to us has been taken uh, away. It's easy to say what we would do in a situation when we've never actually experienced such a storm. But the question is, how do we handle a sudden storm while in reality we are living in an invitation from Jesus that was extended to us upon the acceptance of him as our Savior and our Lord? We agreed that we would follow him and we accepted uh, 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 a re uh, an invitation from him to let's go to the other side. And in this lesson, we are learning that there are some storms in between where we are and the other side. Even though Jesus knew what they would encounter before they reached the other side, his disciples did not. And it's that way with us so often. What we do when storm, when, when, when strong wind storms show up uh, at bedtime, for instance, what do we do as a pastor? I've learned that not only in my life, but in the lives of God's people that have uh, encountered uh, a, a storm and, and he has entrusted their lives into my care. There are times when even after a tough day of work and just as my head hits the pillow, the phone rang and I've got to go and more or less help people to not fear the storm that suddenly arose in their lives. I, I have to ensure, it, it help them to, to know without a doubt that God is still with them. Even though they might be encountering a storm, a loved one is, has just died, but, but, but they, I, my job is to help them to get to the other side. I, I was kind of expressive there because there was a revelation that came to me personally from that. By the way, of either word or example, we must self, must do several things. And the first one is we must, and when storms show up in our lives, suddenly, Jesus knew all knew that they were coming, but we didn't. When those storms show up in our lives, the first thing we should do is go to Jesus and cry out for help. Go to Jesus and cry out for help. We must practice being in constant contact with Jesus. And when we pray without ceasing, that's a good starting point of preparing for great storms. Even though we might not be able to see him because of the actions of the storm, we might be focusing on the storm and Jesus is a spirit now and, and we can't see him. But yes, we need to know that he's closer than close or he's reachable no matter what's going on in our lives, no matter how loud the winds and the storm might be. We need to remember that Jesus is reachable. He's just one prayer away. The Apostle Paul describes it this way in Acts uh, chapter 17, verse 28. We're familiar with that verse. It says, in him we live, move, and have our being. So wherever I am, whatever I'm doing, if I'm in him and he's in me, we can live and move and have our being in him. We have our being is saying in the first person plural indicative, it means that we are living in him and he's with us always. We have our being in, is saying that 
it's a matter of. It, it matters not what it looks like, what's going on around us, but we have hope and hope is always in the future tense because we don't hope for what we have already. It also speaks to the fact that nothing about us ever escapes the attention of the Lord. There's nothing going on in our lives that Jesus is not privy to. He's aware of it. He knows all about it. He knows even what we are thinking. While Jesus was down in the hull of the ship uh, asleep, he knew what was going on in the minds of his disciples. And if Jesus is aware of everything about us and is always with us and have complete power needed to keep us, even in the storms of life, then we should not be afraid. Jesus wanted his disciples and all believers that look beyond, to look beyond the current circumstances and situations to the future with Jesus. And if Jesus has invited us to go through the other side, no matter what comes up in between, we can be assured that we will make it to the other side. With Jesus, there is the things are always better than they might seem. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 1 and 2, then I'm reading from the English Standard Version, says, I was ready to be sought by those who did not seek me. That's God speaking to us. I was ready to be found by those who did not seek me. And I said, here am I, here am I to a nation that was not called by my name. And, and verse two says, I spread out my arms all the day to a rebellious people who walked in a way that is not good, following their own devices. God is constantly with his arms um, stretched out saying, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, come unto me and I'll give you rest unto your soul. My yoke, of, take my yoke upon you and learn of me for my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. First Chronicles chapter 28 verse nine says, and you Solomon, my son, know the God of your fathers and serve him with a whole heart. And with a willing mind, we've got to be willing to follow Jesus no matter what. And it goes on to say, for the Lord searches all hearts and understands every plan and thought. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. Psalms 32, verse 6 and 7, and I think I've got a, a, a couple of uh, versions for uh, to increase our understanding. I'll read the, from the Amplified Version first. Psalms chapter 32, verse 6 and 7 says, For this forgiveness, let everyone who is godly pray, pray to you in a time when you may be found. Surely when the great waters of trials overflow, they shall not reach the spirit in him or us. It says you are a hiding place. And speaking of God, you are a hidden place for me. You, O oh Lord, preserve me from trouble and you surround me with the song and shouts of deliverance. And calmly gives me peace. And then the Living Bible version of those same verses, uh, Psalms 32, verse 6 and 7 says, Now I say that each believer should confess his sins up to God. And when he is aware of them, while there is time to be forgiven, uh, judgment will not touch him if he does. You are my hidden place or my hiding place from every storm of life. And you, 
even keep me from getting into trouble. You surround me with songs and victory. And then the message version is saying uh, these things add up. Every one of us needs to pray. When all hell break loose and the dams burst, we will be on high ground, untouched, because God is my island hideaway, keeps danger far from the shores, and throws garlands of Hosanna around my neck. In, in other words, those verses are saying that, 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 that we can trust God and find him. And, and it reminds us that sin separates us from God. And, and if we pray and ask God to forgive us sin for our sin, that removes the sin. And it makes God will position himself, himself so that we can find him. So find Jesus and cry out for help. The second thing is observe Jesus. We would learn so much of how to act if we would keep our eyes on Jesus and observe him closely at how he respond to storms. His disciples could see that Jesus was perfectly at peace, even in the midst of the storm. Now, this fact alone should encourage us as it should have encouraged his disciples. Jesus was in God's will and knew that the father would care for him. So he took a nap. And, 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 and we can have rest and peace and, and sleep in storms when we are in our Father's will. Jesus stayed in the Father's will. From the beginning, he said to his mother, Know ye not that I must be about my Father's business? And in the end, he said, and when the, there was a great storm in his life, Jesus said, not my will, but thy will be done. Stay in the Father's will. Stay in Jesus' will. And, 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 and notice how he responds. And we can respond to the storms of life just as Jesus. Jesus slept in the storm because he was truly secure. And now, now notice that he was not worried about the outcome of the storm. Storms will come and they can come up unexpectedly. But Jesus will see us safely to the other side. I must make mention here of another biblical character that wanted to go his own way. Jonah, he ended up in a storm and he ended up out of God's will and sometimes storms come to, to maneuver us or reposition us to where God wants us to be and he wants us to be in his will. The third thing is Trust Jesus. Trust Jesus. We need to, to, to go to Jesus and cry out for help. And when we find him, we need to observe him and learn to uh, 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 respond to troubles the way Jesus did. And then thirdly, trust Jesus. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 and 16 of the English Standard Version says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. In other words, he knows exactly what we're feeling. He, 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 anticipates, he knows that we're going to be weak. 
So, so, so he, you know, if, 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 if I know somebody that's always coming to me whining, 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 complaining, grumbling, I'll admit that I have a tendency to, 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 to not be sympathetic to them. But we have a high priest that is able to sympathize with our weaknesses and, and one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. So let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy in, and find grace to help in times of need. Psalms 107 verse uh, 27 through 31 says, They reeled and staggered like drunken men and were at their wit's end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. You have to trust, the Je trust Jesus to deliver you, and then ask him to deliver you, and he will deliver you. Or And, and, and the more I become familiar with the Lord, the more I'm convinced that he will get in the trouble with you. You might not see him. He might be there in the fiery furnace of life walking around with you, just like he was with the three Hebrew young men. But so often he will get in the trouble in the danger with us. And if he's, if he's with us in our dangers, danger will not overtake us. Verse 29 says, for he made the storm to be still and the waves of the sea were hushed. Then they were glad that the waters were quiet and he brought them to their desired haven to where they were going. Trust Jesus for the ability to rest and sleep in rough storms. And we can experience rest and peace in great storms. Al Green sang a song that I, what I still love it. I used to love it uh, uh, when I was transitioning from unconverted to converted. Uh, uh, I used to cry a lot with this song. He, it, it was titled, The Lord Will Make a Way Somehow. And just a few of the words he said, like a ship that is tossed and driven, battered by an angry sea. When the storms of life are raging and their fury falls on me, I wonder what have I done? that makes this race so hard to run. And then I say to my soul, take courage because the Lord will make a way somehow. And I say to us today, when storms are raging, take courage because the Lord will make a way somehow. And therefore, we can experience rest and peace in great storms. And if you are rested and if you've got peace, you can sleep in a storm. Let us pray. Lord, help us to trust you to take us safely beyond our limits. Help us to experience rest and peace that only you can give us. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, as I always do in closing, I want to remind us to uh, wear masks to protect others and ourselves and uh, practice distancing ourselves from others when, we don't, when we're out in public and especially when we don't have a mask on. And, 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 and this is something that I want to remind us. 
sometimes you can get too close to a person to make them uncomfortable. And that's not just in this pandemic season. Everybody don't want you all up in their face. Getting too close to them. So, so be mindful of that fact. And, 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 and value others space. And then the last thing, and I'm gone, is wash your hands often. And with those three things, the Surgeon General says that we can save lives. And one of those lives that we save might be our very own. Happy dreams as you sleep and have peace and rest in fierce storms. So long.